up there on uh youtube check us out on apple podcast spotify wherever your podcast uh chase most podcast national daily sports podcast here on the blue wire pod network so like subscribe rate and review all that good stuff help other people find the show and help this very show continue to grow each and every day here on the blue wire pod network which just celebrated its fourth birthday yesterday Ooh. um john first yes. things first though uh on the baseball edition of this very program JT Romuto, you didn't think we'd start with the Phillies, did you? You didn't think we'd go there. Look, the Phillies, the Phillies are a playoff team, despite the fact that they were without Bryce Harper <laughs> for two months, which is mm-hmm. I mean, go back to the day Bryce Harper was injured or the day Bryce Harper went on the injured list when the Phillies were out of the wild card race, like hovering about or below 500 and tell Phillies fans, hey, not only is he going to come back this season, but the next two months are going to be the best stretch of baseball this team has played in probably like five years. Mm-hmm. And they would have just looked at you like you were crazy and gone back to studying the Eagles uh, like training camp roster. Mm-hmm. It's it's pretty remarkable what Philadelphia has done. And, and Real Muto is a, is a really big part of that. So, yeah, let's let's talk JT, the, the best catcher in baseball. It's not a hard list. I thought about it where it's like, yeah, he probably is. But then you look through it and you're like, we've talked about it in this podcast uh, ad nauseum at this point of just that, like, there is a dearth of just talent at the major league roster well, in terms of catchers there's a dearth of two-way players i think yeah is a big thing. like it, to, as part of this you know i was looking up uh real mudo's defensive numbers per baseball prospectus and they you know they have uh really in-depth catching defense stats and by their measure real mudo is fifth in catcher defensive adjustment they're kind of catch-all stat that covers framing uh blocking throwing out runners all that fun stuff The top four guys ahead of him, Jose Trevino, who before this season was a pretty unknown backup uh, glove first guy who has had a little bit of a I don't want to call it a breakout with the Yankees because I, I, you know, I don't I don't haven't looked at Trevino closely enough to know whether or not his offense is something that can be replicable or if this is just kind of a the kind of weird bounce that catchers get sometimes. Uh, Tomas Nito, who is 100 percent a glove first guy in the mold of Jeff Mathis, Austin Hedges, who is pretty much the next Jeff Mathis. And Jonah Heim, who has a ton of power from both sides of the plate, interestingly enough. I don't I don't know the last time we had a, a, a well-known switch inning catcher, but uh definitely not as well rounded offensively as Real Mudo, and only four years younger than him, too. I mean, there are rarely any youngish catchers. So I mean, the list of guys you would consider be like, okay, they're great at the plate and behind it. It's really it's Real Mudo, it's Adley Rutschman, it's Will Smith. When he's healthy, it can be Yasmani Grandal. Sean Murphy, when he's right, I think is is up there, and I think he's going to be a really interesting name to watch in the offseason. Uh, Alejandro Kirk is actually graded out really well defensively, which is a surprise to me. But it, it's not, it, to your point, it's not a long list. There there are not a lot of guys who are uh, who are really, truly great, or even very good on both sides of the plate, or who even qualify as a franchise catcher. And right now, that group pretty much just is I mean, and Real Muto might even be too old for that now at 31, but you're looking mm. at the, you know, the Rutschman, Kirk, Smith, Murphy uh, grouping, and then maybe a step below because of age, you have Real Muto. But at least in terms of currently holding the title, yeah, he's he's the best catcher in baseball. I, I, I don't think there's really a, a debate there. By by our measures, by Fangraph's war, he's the best catcher in baseball uh, with, I believe, Will Smith right behind him. Or no, Sean mm-hmm. Murphy right behind him. And then Will Smith and Wilson Contreras, also part of that uh, top group. But yeah, it's 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 remarkable too, because there was, I mean, he's been fine in Philly for the most part, but there definitely was a portion, I think, especially earlier this year when it looked like, boy, what is wrong with JT Realmuto? Something does mm-hmm. not seem to be right here. And instead, he's turned around very nicely. Uh, he won't be that for long. Like Adley Rutschman's coming. Like this is one of those where you look at any like they're Baltimore's eighth in WRC plus at the catcher spot. I mean, Alejandro Kirk. Maybe this is sustainable. Maybe that's for the next couple of years. I, I, I th- think it is, if only because of the hit tool. The hit tool for mm. Kirk is it's is very very good. You know, we're talking about a, a a guy who's shown like you know a preternatural ability to to put the to put the bat on the ball. So that that alone is worth something. And Rutschman, I don't think they're. I mean, I think in a few years' time, we will be saying Adley Rutschman is far and away the number one catcher in baseball mm-hmm. because that's that's what he was supposed to be, you know, barring yeah. injury or barring something weird. And we've already seen it. You know, we've mm-hmm. already seen how good he is at every facet of the game so far. So It's not a Joey Bart situation. 
Um, no, and and even there, I mean, I think there's still hope for Bart, but that it's probably just going to have to come with a pretty elevated strikeout rate. Unfortunately, you know that, that he's not he's, and I don't know if any Giants fans realistically expected this, but I, I don't see the second coming of Buster Posey there. Although the second coming of a Hall of Fame catcher is not exactly, you don't get that every every you know every time. It, it's it not turns as if out it's really hard to just go from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers. And yeah, this, this franchises is, it doesn't work this like is that. not a Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck situation mm -hmm. where they just they just uh, luck into the exact same thing, but younger. Yeah, that's just not usually how it works. Like you need uh, let's just use the word luck again. You need a lot more luck, John, um, involved in that. But I, I'm curious. The last thing on Real, uh, Real Muto is for you now that he has so many plate appearances in Philadelphia. Do you think it was a good idea for the Phillies to bring in real Muto? And he's been worth the, cause he was, he was traded to Philadelphia, right? He mm -hmm. was traded yeah, for Miami yeah. as part of uh, the main part. Sorry. The main piece going back to Miami was Sixto Sanchez. Right. So now that hindsight being 2020 here, was it the right move? Was it worthwhile for the Phillies to make this move? Yes, 100%. Okay. Um, if nothing else, you know, the so that trade in its entirety was Jorge Alfaro, Sixto Sanchez, a minor prospect named Will Stewart, and some international bonus slot money for Real Muto. Mm. Uh, certainly Alfaro, I don't think, is a guy the Phillies miss. Someone who had a lot of helium coming up, but has ended up being more just kind of a bat-first backup. Uh, I think now with San Diego, I want to say, is where Alfaro has, has ended up at this point. He is, in fact, in San Diego as a as an occasional starter who provides close to league average offense, but most of that is in the power side of things. Sanchez obviously still has a, a bright future ahead of him if he can get healthy, but so far we haven't seen that. Uh, he obviously missed a lot of time last year with shoulder problems. He has not pitched a whole lot this season because of arm problems. In fact, he hasn't pitched at all this season. Um, that definitely has to be concerning for Miami. I mean, the guy showed electric stuff when he was healthy, but when he's healthy is now something we haven't seen for two full seasons. So even just on that, on that simple basis, in terms of a, a really kind of raw or, or crude win loss uh, metric, the Phillies, the Phillies won this trade running away. You know, they, they, have, they do not miss any of the pieces they gave up for, for real Muto. And in exchange, like we said, they got the best catcher currently in baseball um, to say nothing of the fact that real Muto over his Phillies career has put up a 269, 337, 467 line with a 114 OPS plus and uh, an 805 OPS. That is fantastic numbers. He's been a two-time All-Star. Uh, he's been arguably the best hitter on that team since the All-Star break right now. He's a major part of why they survive. Bryce Harper going down, he's, he's going to be a major part of why it is this Phillies team makes the playoffs barring a, a end-of-season collapse, although... I guess the the game they just had against the against the Diamondbacks the other night where they blew a seven run lead and gave up 13 runs in two innings was not ideal. Mm. But yeah, I, I it's hard to it's yes, the, the Phillies won that trade to say nothing of the fact, too, that after re-signing Real Muto this offseason, they still have him for another three years, which is also crucial because this Phillies team does not really have much in the way of basically any catching depth going forward in the minors. <laughs> Um, mm. You know, you pull up per our updated uh, 2022 rankings per organization. The Phillies highest rated catcher on our board is all the way down at number 16 on their list. Donnie Sands, who is currently in AAA and projects mm. to be a long term backup. Uh, they don't really have anyone really set to fill that position anytime soon. So mm. on top of that, it's helped Philly paper over what's been a pretty persistent hole, not just in their lineup, but also in their organization, and then allows them some more time over the next few drafts to start looking for who that catcher of the future might be without having to do stuff like, well, let's play Garrett Stubbs 120 games, because that's just not going to end well for anybody. So yeah, it was a great trade for Philadelphia at the time. It has continued mm. to be a great trade for them. And like I said, if, if Philly does make the playoffs, they can thank Real Muto for a lot of it, which makes sense, like I said. Best catcher in baseball. There you go. Uh